On New Year's Day 2023, a major incident happened at Longleat Safari Park in Wiltshire. The lion enclosure had been closed as one of the lions had killed another lion. It's reported that the lioness died almost instantly, and although zoo animals killing other zoo animals may seem strange at first, it happens more often than you might think. Earlier on in June of 2021, one bull elephant killed another bull elephant at Somerset's Noah Ark Zoo Farm. The two elephants involved in this incident originally lived together, until one of them killed the other one in its sleep. Both of these tragic incidents happened at two zoos that are relatively close to each other, and happened in a relatively small amount of time. These sort of conflicts aren't rare in zoos, and it leads to some people asking if zoos should be allowed to exist anymore. Of course this is a very controversial question, and there are pros and cons that come with keeping wild animals. In theory, zoos are a perfect way to educate people about animals, and also provide a great day out. Zoos give people a chance to see animals that they might not ever see in their lifetime, and it also educates them at the same time. It can also help spread awareness for endangered animals, and people are more likely to care about an endangered animal if they have interacted with it or seen it with their own eyes. Zoos can also offer a new home for neglected animals, and also animals that have been abused. There are still quite a few more pros to keeping animals in zoos, but in most cases they are easily outweighed by the cons. For most large animals in zoos, it's almost impossible to recreate their natural habitat. Of course you can give them lots of space but they are unable to roam, and in the wild most large animals travel large distances each day. There are also plenty of interspecies conflicts that happen in the wild that can prove to be fatal in captivity. This brings us back to the lions in Longleat, as even though lions do sometimes kill each other in the wild, in most cases if an animal is losing a fight, it will choose to run and flee the area. In an enclosure you have no option to flee, and this is where these fights can turn fatal. Most large well-known zoos are also very old zoos, and most of them are found in built-up cities. This means that there is almost never enough space for large animals, and there is no space to expand enclosures. This often leads to the animals becoming stressed, and in turn having poor health. The two animal deaths that happened in zoos in England over the past few years is just the tip of the iceberg, as there have been some crazy events that have happened in zoos around the world. In this video I will be going through just a few of these strange events, as I will be going through three of the craziest things that have ever happened in zoos. And for our first story, we will be heading to a zoo west of Paris, and we will be looking at a very unfortunate rhino called Vince. Vince was a critically endangered southern white rhinoceros, and shared an enclosure with two other older white rhinoceroses. For the most part, he lived a happy yet slightly cramped life, but unfortunately his life was cut short. In the early hours of the 5th of March 2017, a group of men broke into Vince's zoo. These men made a beeline for the rhino enclosure, and quickly pulled out weapons and shot Vince in the head. <coughs> Luckily the other rhino scattered, as the men then produced a chainsaw. They quickly sawed off one of Vince's horns, and got partially through the second one until they were disturbed, or their equipment failed. They then quickly left the zoo with their rhino horn, leaving Vince dead in his enclosure. At the time this was the first incident of its kind in Europe, and the whole world was in shock. This attack had obviously been premeditated, as the poachers quickly moved past multiple locked doors, and knew exactly where to find Vince. The only positive out of this story is that the two other white rhinos survived, and were unharmed after the incident. Vince's horn was thought to have a value of around 30,000 to 40,000 euros on the black market, and this money is what drives poachers to extremes such as this. This incident led to zoos across Europe beefing up their security, and also just goes to show how hard it is to battle poaching. Not only are animals being massacred at an astonishing rate in the wild, but they're also not safe in captivity. Vince's death was a truly shocking and depressing event, but if you want to help anti-poaching efforts in the wild, I've left a link to a donation page on the WWF website down below. And even though Vince's life was tragically short, hopefully he's brought some awareness to the conservation of his species. For our next strange story, we will be heading over to Ohio, but instead of heading over to the Columbus Zoo, we will be heading over to a small area of private land in Zanesville. This area was once home to a small private zoo, and to be honest, the idea of a private zoo is something that I can't get my head around. Private zoos seem to be a mostly American thing, and I often see arguments for private zoos in my comments. Personally, I don't think anyone should be allowed to keep a large wild animal on their property, especially if it's a non-native dangerous animal. 
There seems to be a trend on social media where people try and make wild animals look cute or in some ways harmless. If you keep a large non-native animal as a pet, you will get a lot of interest and interactions online. You often see this with celebrities that like to keep lions and tigers, but in almost every single case the animals are not treated as they should be. Lions and tigers are often kept in cramped conditions and are treated almost as large domesticated cats. Wild animals are called wild for a reason and they can be very dangerous and unpredictable. This was illustrated perfectly in Tiger King, where almost every private zoo owner had something to hide or had suspect motives around keeping animals. These private zoos led to a whole host of animal abuse and it's not just the captive animals that are suffering. One of the main ways in which invasive species make their way to a non-native ecosystem is through the pet trade. This is why you can find pythons in Florida and raccoons in Japan. These invasive species cause millions of dollars of damage, and normally the larger the invasive species, the more of an impact they can have on a non-native ecosystem. In a recent video I covered the story of how Nile crocodiles can now be found in the Everglades, and it's thought that a few of them escaped from a private zoo. If a private zoo owner decides that they can no longer look after their animals, they can either try and rehome their animals, or let them go. When they choose the latter it can cause massive problems, and it can even result in their deaths. This is exactly what happened in 2011, when Terry Thompson decided he could no longer look after his animals and he no longer wanted to live. Terry had ran a small private zoo in Zanesville, and this zoo had been repeatedly reported for inadequate and unsafe housing for the animals. As well as this, he was reported for insufficient water and food, and neighbours had complained about animals escaping. On the tragic day of October the 18th, 2011, Thompson allegedly set free 50 of his 56 exotic animals before shooting himself in the head. On his property, Thompson kept lions, tigers, bears and wolves, and they were all set free to roam around Zanesville. The ensuing chaos led to almost all the animals being killed by law enforcement, and only a few survived. After everything was under control, the bodies were counted, and laying dead were 18 Bengal tigers, 6 black bears, 2 grizzly bears, 2 wolves, 1 macaque, 1 baboon, 3 mountain lions, and 17 African lions. The survivors were 3 leopards, a small grizzly bear, and 2 monkeys, and these animals were tranquilized and sent to Columbus Zoo. One of the surviving leopards was subsequently injured and eventually had to be euthanized at the zoo. After a long investigation, it was found that Thompson was heavily in debt and his wife had also left him. One of the craziest things is that he was described as an animal lover and if you had any love for these animals, you wouldn't keep them in such conditions and eventually let them go to be shot. Seeing all of Thompson's dead animals is really a tragic sight and really I don't think he should have been able to have kept them in the first place. This has to go down as one of the biggest arguments against private zoos and hopefully something like this doesn't ever happen again in the future. But for our final story we will be heading over to Cincinnati Zoo because I can't make a video about crazy zoo stories without including Harambe. Now Harambe was a western lowland gorilla and lived in Cincinnati Zoo from 2014 to 2016. Harambe lived a mostly uneventful life, but this life came to an end on May 28, 2016. Zoos do a relatively good job at keeping animals in their enclosures, but they don't do a very good job at keeping humans out. Some people accidentally fall in animal enclosures, and some people through illness or through desperation choose to enter enclosures on their own. Choosing to be killed by an animal at a zoo is not only a very strange thing to do, but it's also quite a selfish thing to do. In most cases, the animal that will kill you will be shot, and also it's a very painful way to go. Over the years there have been plenty of occasions of people entering animal enclosures, such as a woman entering a polar bear enclosure in Berlin, a man entering an orca enclosure at SeaWorld, and a man entering a lion's enclosure in Chile. On that fateful day back in May 2016 the story was slightly different, as the person who entered Harambe's enclosure was a child. Witnesses say they heard the child saying that he wanted to enter the gorilla enclosure, and then the boy climbed a three foot tall fence and crawled through four feet of bushes. He then fell 15 feet into a moat of shallow water, and zoo officials immediately signalled for the three gorillas to return inside. The two females quickly did so, however the third gorilla, Harambe, climbed down to the moat to investigate the child splashing in the water. Over the next 10 minutes Harambe became increasingly agitated and disorientated, and this wasn't helped by the screams of onlookers. He carried the child through the water, occasionally propping him up when he sat. Fearing for the boy's life, the zookeepers eventually shot Harambe, and he was killed exactly one day after his 17th birthday. Of course, plenty of memes have been made about Harambe, and the killing of Harambe was thoroughly criticised. 
The zoo should be criticised for letting the boy enter the enclosure, but really once the boy was in the enclosure they had little choice. Silverbacks can be very unpredictable and aggressive, and even though he looked to be caring for the boy, the situation could have changed very quickly. Most experts agree that shooting Harambe was one of the only options, but the boy shouldn't have been allowed to enter the enclosure in the first place. This is possibly the most famous event that's ever happened in a zoo, and even though Harambe didn't do a lot wrong, unfortunately he was gunned down where he stood. If you think you know of any other zoo events that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But as always, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.